Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. This is a special edition that we call the Holland Financial Alert. It is Friday, February 25th. I'm David Holland, CEO of Holland Financial, and joining me is Robert Mara, our VP of Investments. Robert, uh, and for the audience, this is the fourth take of doing this uh, show for you because I was so involved with the emotional aspects of this. I woke up to the news of Russia invading Ukraine. I was livid. I was livid, and uh, it's been on my mind, and I really feel for everyone that is affected by this, the Ukrainians, hundreds of people killed, and I think that we want to be very sensitive to the human aspect of this, even though we're gonna talk about the investment and economic aspects. Um, I, I just, it's baffling to me that this happens at this point in our world and our timeline and where we are as a society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean um, just from my personal experience, uh, when I say personal experience, just very quickly, my mother and father fled Hungary in 1956 during the Hungarian Revolution when uh, there were pro-democracy demonstrations, um, especially in Budapest, and uh, the Russians came in and squelched it. And whenever my mom broaches or I broach the topic uh, in front of my mom, you know, she starts crying mm -hmm. um, and just says a lot of people died. So. Um, yeah, so we, we're gonna be talking about numbers and we're gonna be talking about you know, economics and financial impacts on the market stocks, very cold calculating numbers, but you're absolutely right, David. There is definitely a human impact that we do not want to ignore behind those numbers. Absolutely, so um, we, we, will, we woke up to a different world. Yes. It's a different world now. And so um, we need to talk about what I think is important for people to know, which is how does this affect us financially? You know, we're we're watching all of this from afar on television sets uh, or our phones or radio, whatever. Uh, but this has a real impact. So, what are some of the big um, things to start with? You know, the headlines, of course, are that we had the market drop. And we saw that. So speak to that a little bit about what happened there, Robert. It was incredible. And I'm used to volatility in the markets. But yesterday was something I haven't seen in such a short period of time in a very long time, David. So in the morning, everybody was shocked and a whole host of emotions. The markets were down pre-market opening. NASDAQ was down three, three and a half percent. Um, by the end of the day, the Dow Jones actually climbed into positive territory, was up almost three tenths of a percent. S&P 500 was up 1.5% and the NASDAQ was up 3.34%. So what happened that we had a morning of deep red and we ended the day deep green? Yeah. Um, well, one thing major happened was that President Biden came and spoke, I forgot when he spoke, about one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, and there are, a couple of things he said or didn't say, which gave the markets that boost. Number one is we are not sanctioning Russia's oil or gas. Most of their economy is oil and gas. If you want to punish somebody, you go after the meat and potatoes of how their economy, what their economy runs on. Number two, we did not remove them from SWIFT, which stands for, I have it written down because I don't want to fumble my words, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Basically how banking transactions work. Um, that would have hurt them as well. We didn't touch those two. That's why the market's kind of a huge sigh of relief and bounced up. And the, the, the relief for the market, so to speak, is what? That there's going to be uh, no friction or what? I mean, because it seems to me both of those things would be very good to do. Uh, yes. Well, you know, it, there's a lot to it. And of course, there's the political end of it and right. a lot of other factors. Um, but uh, the fact that, first of all, we, it was coming, the, the anxiety and the buildup, no pun intended with the military buildup of the uh, Russians, uh, the dam broke. So it, it, what we were expecting finally happened. Um, Russia invaded Ukraine from three points of the compass by Irland Sea. Okay, that's done with. Um, and then, okay, how are NATO, the United States, this administration, how are they gonna react and how is Putin going to counter react? Well, when we don't, again, put sanctions on oil and gas, the reason why that's a relief is, let's say we did do that, 
And well, Russia supplies about 10 to 11 million barrels of oil per day to the world economy, about you know, 10, more than 10%. So then the United States, OPEC, um, Saudi Arabia, other countries would have to increase production, um, but prices would have gone up. So for example, oil easily passed $100 a barrel. By the end of the day yesterday, it was back down to about 93. So that is part of it. Okay, so we're still going to have though ongoing issues with our oil uh, globally and what we experience here in the US in terms of what it costs for oil. And as we've talked about previously, and we're gonna continue to talk about this, uh, oil is one of the biggest uh, inputs or ingredients for how inflation is going to play out. Right. And so the number one thing we can do as a country, and then we'll move on to some of the other impacts, and David's not a politician, but uh, the number one thing we can do is to, be, to get back to energy independence. And the, you know, one of the biggest things that will do, besides making us more independent and more resilient, it, the, the cheaper oil gets the less fuel, no pun intended, that Russia has for its war machine, because that's where, as you said earlier, they're deriving most of their country's economic, their gross domestic product. Yes, so when they took over Crimea in 2014 and supported the separatists in the Donbass region, um, what was, where was oil at during 2014? It reached up to $140 per barrel. There we go. That was seven, eight years ago. Well, here we are again, seven, eight years later. He is flush with cash and he is using that. Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine okay, that. Okay, so where do we go from here, Robert? I know that, that we've, we've set this up adequately. Um, going forward, talk just a minute about uh, trying to time the market, saying, oh my gosh, it's time to get out. Um, talk about people moving in and out of the market in reaction to this and the consequences. You've got some numbers on this. Yes, um, you know, again, Thursday morning, we had just a couple of calls, a couple clients put me to cash. And hey, most of the world was freaking like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen with this? That is when, you know, I hate to bring this up with Warren Buffett again, but he was just so right. You know, uh, be frightful, be frightened when people are greedy but be greedy when people are frightened. Mm -hmm. um, and sure enough, I actually you know, went into some positions for some, uh, some of our models. And by the end of the day, I, I was patting myself on the back. I'm like, hey, good job, Robert. You know, I'm learning too. But um, the, the worst thing you can do is, when, when th is go to cash. Right. Um, because just the, whoever did go to cash in the morning probably regretted it. I hate to say it by the end of market close. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. If you have a planner and you're planning uh, for um, your future, you have to stick with that plan. Getting out and, okay, I think the market's gonna go down 50%. You know what? You have to stick with your plan. That's number one. 100% agree. We're celebrating our 25th year in business at Holland Financial in July. And what I've been saying for 25 years is if somebody has a reaction to a world or economic or market event and they want to go to cash, my question has always been the same thing. Has something changed in your life that now all of a sudden you need more cash? Because you've got a financial plan that right. is to work and there's, we can't tell you when the market's gonna correct and go down 10%. We can't tell you when it's gonna go up 10%. We just can't, we don't have that, a crystal ball. We've got four in my <laughs> office, but they, none of them work, you know that, right? And underneath they all say, crystal ball broken, financial planning required. And the reason we have that is to remind people, we can't tell you about how those things are gonna play out, but what we can tell you is if you have a plan, you can ride through situations like what we're experiencing now. And you know what? There will be another world event. We don't know when it's gonna come, but these things always come at us sideways. They, you know, the COVID uh, meltdown or collapse, or what do you wanna call it, in 2020. You have now this world event all over the place with Russia and Ukraine. There's always gonna be something out there. Exactly, David. And you started this program by saying, you know, the world's a different place, you know, when sure. we woke up this morning. And that is correct. But the, the sun will still rise the next day. Um, other world events will occur. But the important part is having a plan, sticking to it. And, you know, that's what we're here for sure. in terms of altering the investment landscape, picking and choosing the particular investments. Um, but, 
you asked me, how does this change? Volatility is still going to happen. The markets are still going to go down some days and recover some days. Right. Um, but as far as you know, the markets completely being annihilated by any certain event, uh, when things get bad, look at it as an opportunity. Okay, fair enough. Stick to your plan and then look for opportunities. I like that. Exactly. Okay, good. Very good. Well, this is the Holland Financial Alert. Thank you for joining us. And of course, be sure to share this video with a friend or family member who might be concerned about where things are and the market. If you do that, you'll plan stronger and so will they. Mm -hmm.